good. There has always been children, and there has always been boredom. Uh, and actually, before long, we didn't have Xboxes. Before that, we had Pogs. Before that, we had Logs. Before that, we had Sticks and Stones. All sorts of games and outsor- outside fun. Today, we're going to talk about how dangerous some of them were, how boring some of them really were, and how utter garbage some of them were. Join us for Funny Games. So I'm Dan. And I'm Nick, folks. We're old friends dissecting one topic at a time. People, technology, media, we've got it all covered. Ah. Each discussion here is a deep dive into our unique perspective. With taboo, forbidden subjects, they're all on the chopping block, baby. We don't pander to popular opinion. We might even get a little bit dirty. Warning, this podcast may contain mature language and sexual content and is for infotainment purposes only. So join us. Have a good time. Open up your ear holes, because we're going to fondle your follicles. Ooh! Here we are. Yeah, again. Nice. This is like our fun and game. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fun games. For this one, I had to research what it was like to have a childhood, and I mm. found out it must have been pretty exciting for some people. <laughs> I'm actually going to do a quick factoid for y'all. Oh. See this? For those of you who don't see, mm-hmm. I'm describing something, okay? Tell me what it is. It's 56 grams to 59.4 grams. The range is acceptable. Diameter of 6.54 centimeters all the way up to 6.86 centimeters. All acceptable, folks. If I test it, I have to drop it from 100 inches onto concrete, and it has to bounce between 53 and 58 inches. It's in a color called optic yellow, introduced in 1972 because it's more convenient to be viewed on television. That's right, folks. I'm not talking about my wife. I'm talking about a tennis ball. This is literally the greatest invention of all time. It's like fluorescent in your hand. That's how bright it is. Yeah, and it's awesome. And I used to um, bounce one of these in like the first three episodes, and it really bothered Dan. Yeah, it did, because you kept saying you were the, like the prince of wall ball nation or something. The kingdom I'm of just, wall ball. I'm just really good at certain tennis ball games. Uh-huh. I've probably played with a tennis ball more than any other thing in my life, including my Johnson, folks. I know I was thinking <laughs> it. <okay? laughs> he has a tennis ball named Johnson. I do. Go like, with my volleyball like name Wilson. Wilson. Yep. Yes. Yeah, we both know. <laughs> Look at that. Chuckle, 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 <laughs> chuckle, chuckle. Oh, um, yeah, so we came around before video games, right? Yeah, the first video game I played was probably somewhere in sixth grade, maybe fifth grade. Oh, really? I was in second grade, I think. Re- what? I got, Second? I, yeah, I got like a Nintendo. I was like six or something like that. It was like Mario Brothers. It came with Mario Brothers Duck Hunt. I was like six years old. Maybe so, my yeah. scale of time is way off. It could be, or mine is. I mean, really, who are you going to trust? The internet. Uh, <laughs> Help yeah, us strangers knows? on the internet. Uh, we're going to try and figure it out. But um, we did have those video games, and they were cool. And definitely, you know, I would play indoors, but it didn't take the place of all my playtime. Like nowadays, a kid could play Xbox professionally. Or PC or whatever. I guess NES came in 1983, so it could have been any of those times. Jeez. That's wild. I wonder when it became like a hot button item in the United States. I feel like I was five or six. I feel like maybe it was like fourth grade, actually, now that I think about it. But I don't have very much memory before fourth grade, which fourth grade is how old? Eight? Ten? Eight? It could be between eight and ten. It's between eight and ten. I have to research 10 years old. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. We're Googling how old is a fourth grader. <laughs> oh, Oops. man. Thank you, Good Internet. Stuff. That's fantastic. Yeah, so, but before before that, we had games, right? Physical friggin' games. I know yeah. you covered a lot of board games, yep. which I didn't have. Which uh, So do you remember any that you played? Yeah, we always played Trouble. It sucked. Oh, Trouble. 
Uh, we had mouse trap, but we didn't play the game. We just tried to set it up and have it capture the mouse. But yeah, only like two pieces worked out of the five. Yeah, it always screwed up. <laughs> um, yeah. I have one of the other ones, Light Bright. That sucked. Yeah. Okay. We had. Uh, it's not really a game, but we'll call it a game. Domino, Domino Rally. Like you'd set them all up. Mm. It's kind of. Like oh, with the, the little plastic ones. Yeah, yeah. Like they weren't made of that hard material. They're the super chintzy fake ones, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, I know which ones you're talking about. Yeah, I forgot about that. Like a Rube Goldberg machine. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of what other board games. I had dozens, like Sorry. Monopoly. Sorry. That one, no one really plays Monopoly for real. Have you ever finished a game of Monopoly? It's The end is you realize that it's too much have like you? real life, and then you hate the people who are in charge. Late stage capitalism. So have you finished it? This is a real real question. I'm sure we have at one point. Are you sure? Or do you think they just, you guys admitted that someone was about to win and it would just take another 40 turns and you were like, let's call it. I'd rather go in debt for the rest of my life. Oh, wait a second. I have. Oh, shit. <laughs> Mon- there should be Monopoly college, real life. college education. Is that on the board too? Don't think No, it's, it's mm. not. Although one of the flippy cards, the treasure ones, you majored in English. <laughs> you give up all your money. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, what other board games you got on there? You got a list? A list uh, of... Battleship? Does that count as a board game? Yeah, that counts. That was like, because it was before any of the electronic Battleship. Like, mm-hmm. none of that. Mm-hmm. You had to just assume someone was telling the truth there. Yeah, I had one of those magnetic, like, foldable things. So it had, like, three uh-huh. games in one. You could kind of, like, fold it and, like, outside. Like... Well, what were the games? This sounds uh-huh. really familiar. I think it was like you had checkers and chess on one side. And yeah. Then on the other side, you had like uh, shoots and ladders. That could be. Oh, shoots and ladders and Candyland and. Uh, Candyland. That was my nickname in college. Shoots and ladders, Candyland. It was. I'm not kidding. Because it was Canadan. Was... And then somehow it morphed into Candyland. Candyland. Land. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. That's. I thought. I was like, wow, <laughs> some, some weird really stuff going on. going on here. <laughs> <laughs> we just. Uh, <laughs> What did you do at Halloween? Ooh, a lot <laughs> of kids come to the candy land. That's Candyman. Woo! Yeah. Interesting. You know, this, uh, Shoots and Ladders was uh, Snakes and Ladders, and that was like a morality game. So, like, your vices would set you back, and your oh. virtues would lift you up. So you were trying to sort of reach heaven is the goal there, I think obviously. so, yeah. Righteousness. But was it, were you going back down to earth or to hell? Like, was this after you died, you, you had a hell of a battle? You were either going to one or the other for etern- eternity? I have no idea. I just read a really, really, really funny tweet I could share. It was from Clickhole, so we know it's good. Oh, nice. And they said, um, everyone rejoice. Mother Teresa is finally going to heaven after serving time in purgatory for <laughs> illegally downloading a torrent of um, <laughs> from Mrs. Doubtfire back in 1993. <laughs> and then the whole article was how Mrs. Doubtfire she illegally... Mrs. Doubtfire in Oh, maybe it was 94. I read the article like six hours ago, really. Damn it. I was wrong. I was, was wrong by a month. I was off by a month. It was 93. Oh. Shit. You didn't know how old you, like your Nintendo was, but you knew the year <laughs> Mrs. Doubtfire, Doubtfire came out up to the month? <laughs> yeah, it came out. Okay. Yeah, it was close. That's fair. But Weird. A, to- a torrent. How about, oh. Name. It might not have. Yeah, that, <laughs> that did seem. I don't know. Kazaa. LimeWire. It could have been on Kazaa or LimeWire. <laughs> anyway, if Mother <laughs> Teresa did it and she was the best person to ever live, she still would have to atone for that sin, wouldn't she? Yeah, she and would I have thought, to Damn. pay the devil, which would be the record company's $5,000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is a good point. Mm. Uh, you wouldn't steal a house, would you? But you'd steal a movie or video game. No, do you know that? That was their, their whole argument? What was that? Uh, Against yeah, yeah, they had that person that would like yeah, yeah, yeah. physically like, grab something. Yeah, 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 yeah. You wouldn't steal Nick's soul, would you? Someone's like... <laughs> Yeah, it's gone. Um, Parcheesi, do you remember that board game? I remember that one. That for some, I don't know why they would name it that because it's not friendly. It sounds to kids. really bad, yeah. but it could have been 1940s when that was made. We did you know play what that. I mean? It's like I don't, I don't know how to compare these things because I haven't played them in 20 years probably because they probably suck. It's so weird that we're thinking of explaining a board game to someone listening online, but maybe by the time we're really, really popular, people won't have played board games. So we should sort of explain it, I guess. It's like I actually saw a graph. Dice. I saw a graph that uh-huh. board games are like the most produced thing in a long time. Like it was almost like uh, uh, uh-huh. like the curve was ridiculous. It was okay. Just 
insane how how many board games are being produced now and expansions. What's the average board game cost? Like ten bucks? I have no idea. What a question to ask. That is a very difficult. Thirty bucks? How does that even? <laughs> how will we how will we figure this out on the fly? We're such a well-oiled machine, and I can't hear him typing. It must yeah. be an amazing yeah, keyboard. Yeah. Average family board, board. yeah, thirty bucks. Some cost thirty. Okay. Some cost three. Yeah, always. Yeah, okay, never mind. That's three thousand. That you know that. If someone... you were to buy a hundred board games. <laughs> wow. <laughs> good. Good bargain. Good yeah, bargain. Good bargain. Yeah. So what was your point? Um, well, Parcheesi looked like it was super old, though. Like the way it's just right. It, it might have been super old. It is super old. Some of these board well, games were invented in like the sixties, <laughs> and then. Check this out. We found. Can you find Twix? I feel like Twix. if you do, it'll ruin it. Pick up sticks. So, no, it's called Twix. I think. Anyway, it's. <laughs> Could you find it? How, how, Twix game like candy bar. Yeah. I hope you can't because we um go up oh, to a house. Wait a second. That's weird. It's a weird game. It's so like hold you on. Plug, okay. You plug things into a pegboard. Yeah. And you okay. Them. Hold on. Let me explain this. So it's like really cool. We go to. Yeah, so we go up the mountains, uh, all the music guys, like once a year, up to like above the Poconos, like somewhere where it's population 5,000. There's only four like stores in the whole town, and it's like no cell service, no anything. Like we own acres of land, and we all just go and bring our electronics. We, got, we, got we found a board game up there, and that was it. And no one knows anything about it, where it came from, and we just play it. It could be possessed by the devil. It's really cool. I don't understand. And we drink and play that What's, game. I was from the picture. I can't tell you. You go. It's enemy? one, one team, one team, one team, one team, and you have to go from one side to the other, and you can't cross over a line that's already made. Oh, like and Chinese you play with checkers. two, a little bit, but you play with two people, and you're not allowed to talk to the person. But it's the other person's turn every other time. So without using words, you have to have a strategy that's in place and be able to cut off the other team and. It's really mm. cool. I, I screwed up a couple big time ones. You will be forever shamed. <laughs> yeah, I still am. But board games are, they can be cool. They can be lame. What's interesting about them, I want to put out there right away, is that they're literally designed by someone or some ones to create problems and fun and, you know, competition, et cetera, right? Yep. But they're a design. It's sort of like, it's a little bit like a video game in that, it's just not electronic, right? They yeah. want you to play a video there's game a certain way. They give you parameters. Mm -hmm. Fit inside, and the, there's a goal. There's usually get right. to the end, you know. Simple. So I think that's cool and all, but do you know what's even cooler than those? Is the games that no one made. The games that folk kids came up with games. Themselves? Oh. Yeah, so they're called traditional or folk games, and I found a really cool definition that I'm going to share with you. Fantastic. Folks. It's games that are played informally with minimal equipment that children learn from other children and can be played without reference and or no written rules. It, it usually includes two of the following. Physical skill, strategy, chance, repetition of patterns, creativity, and vertigo. Vertigo. <laughs> yeah, I guess balance on stuff. I don't know. But so, these are games that are the coolest, I think, because I forget about them the most, but I totally played them a lot as a kid, way more than board games. So does like wrestling count as a game? Because my child loves yeah, to wrestle. Yeah, it could. Or like yeah. chase, catch, tag, all those things? Yeah, all of them, totally, 100%. They're like innate games. That's why I love the tennis ball. You can play like a million games with a tennis ball. That is true. You, there's like no end of the fun as long as you're outside. It helps, I guess, being in a city setting, though, because there's more concrete around you. More things to bounce off of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. or hmm. even bounces. Um, hopscotch. Did you ever play hopscotch? I did, yeah. Did you play it? I always just hopped on it sometimes. There's a game associated with, with the stone and all that. Aren't you supposed to like do like one foot, and then once it's split, you do two feet, and then you switch feet, and then you do two feet? Is that that's hopscotch? Right? Yeah, but there's that's that's just how you walk the board there's actually a game involved where you find a stone it's usually a very flat stone because you want it to stop rolling where you throw it hmm. and and the other part of it was apparently i read the cool thing was like getting the chalk for hopscotch was harder to do it wasn't like you had chalk you had to steal it from the teacher usually so you would try and steal a piece of chalk from class go outside in the schoolyard draw it 
you know, argue with your friends on whether the one was too big and all, and then you would find a stone, right? You throw that stone on one, you'd hop on it as you were supposed to, one foot, two foot, one foot, two foot to get to the stone and then back. And then the other person would try. And as you keep progressing, you go to the next level, the next level, eventually you get to seven, you get to eight. So now you're hopping out to eight, grabbing your stone and working your way back. And I was like, whoa, I just thought it was a stupid bunch of squares that you were supposed to dance on in a weird way. But is that hard? But that game was probably not, but like for kids without Do you think there's someone in the world? Well, do you think there's somewhere in the world someone's so good at hopscotch it's ridiculous? Or someone so bad at hopscotch that it's their like their will, their desire to beat it finally, <laughs> and they're still doing it even though they're like sixty years old. Today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> their skills have gone down. They should have maximized at twenty one, right? We yeah. did a whole episode on that. I couldn't find any more teacher's chalk. They've given up. Another another game before us was called Kick the Can. Mm. Which I've heard referenced maybe a million times in my life. I've never, I don't know what it is. I don't know that I've actually kicked the can. I've kicked a can, but I don't know if there are rules involved. Yeah, apparently it's like um, hide and seek sort of. There's a, there's a, hot, a seeker and he has the can behind him. And he um, will look around and if he finds you, he has to say, Susie's behind the woods and he kicks the can and Susie's out. But if he's over here looking for someone and he can't find anyone, someone comes from out of their hiding spot and jumps over the can behind his back and says whatever they say, a term or something, and they're out, so he can't get them now. And I was like, whoa. That I thought you just very kicked the goddamn timey. thing. It does, right? It's almost like hide-and-seek. A little bit, yeah, which is probably also one of the older ones, right? But I did, but I played hide-and-seek a bunch. Yeah, but there's multiple versions of hide-and-seek where one person mm-hmm. goes in and hides, so this is the, the variant, mm-hmm. and then everyone else tries to find them, and the last person to find them is the loser. Hmm. Versus Rude. everyone hides except for one person, and the one person has to find everybody else. I was like, that's right. a weird way to play it. A reverse way? Yeah. We did a... So, I don't know what your situation was growing up, but um, in Northeast Philly, we had a driveway out back. And I still know how many kids we would play with on the regular that were in my like mm-hmm. five-year age range. It was Andy and Scott, uh, Sammy and Michelle... Casey, not his sister, for whatever reason, she never played with us. Uh, oh my God, Vu, Peanut, uh, and I want to say two or three more. I'm missing a couple people here. We always had like ten kids who would play like every mm-hmm. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and we would just run around because we knew almost all the houses on the block. But we had the the northeast houses where it was it was a one way street that was very not busy, and it had the little patch of grass out front, the hill, the mm-hmm. grass hill. Yeah, and every like, house had, had like, one of them. Like yeah. 10 feet wide, maybe, and it was like a drop of six feet. Yeah, 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 yeah. But there were like, you know, 30 of them in a row, or however many houses there would be. I guess there's probably like 20. I don't, I don't even know. It's weird. I never thought of that. And then we would also consider the other side, the driveway side, was like fair game as well. As long as we stayed on this side, which had all the cars and stuff. The cool thing was I knew which houses had the, um, the lights that would turn on, the motion sensors. Mm-hmm. And we'd always play around dusk, maybe just after. And I think our parents would all kind of hang out, like, outside drinking beers, I think. Just to make sure you don't if run that's away. that's possible. So what games did you play in that area? So Tag was really popular, but a really, really cool one was, like, Manhunt or Cops and Robbers or Freedom or Spree. These were all different names for, like, almost the same game. Yeah. It was, like, usually teams. And if they caught you, like, one, two, three, you're my man. I don't know if you've ever heard that mm-hmm. expression. Yeah, yeah. Had to have two hands on a person. Had to give them a one, two, three, you're my man. They have to come with you to the prison, wherever the prison was. And the whole time, people are skulking around in the shadows on your team. And the other team has their cops. There's still one person always guard the jail. And the other people would still be looking around for more people, capture more and more of them. Yeah. But if one of you, the uh, the other team, went back and tagged the base, like all your, your people were free. I kind of remember that. We had a lot of fun with that. And Ollie, Ollie, Oxen free. Yeah, probably the same kind of game. I don't know. I, I know that no, name, it's just but a I phrase. It's a phrase to say. Essentially, it's like you're good. Like we we've taken over. We switch sides. Now you're you're free uh-huh. good. I like it. Yeah, it's something like I've heard a lot, but games. I didn't really know uh-huh. what what it was actually about. Had you guys pick someone for like tag or something? Someone where one person was it, or two people were it? Hmm. It's like one of those short straw things, but I guess as kids you don't really yeah, do but that. You don't have straws. You pick either like 
the fastest person or the slowest person, I guess, is the most logical. No, we did because that's that's, a, that's unfair. That's picking. You gotta have a randomizer. We would do um, everyone put your foot in a circle, and then you would look at them all and go spit, spit, spit. You are not yep. it, and that mm-hmm. person's out. And then you go all the way down to the bottom. Any, 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 horse in the barnyard. Yep, horse in the barnyard. P U. He laid a big one on you. That was a good one. <laughs> I always thought that was funny. Just I'm trying to remember all these things that we used to do, and I I didn't I didn't remember any of them until like tonight. I was like, what? Yeah, oh, yeah. The research is weird because like like you would think about a board game and it remind you of another board game, and then you'd think about a person mm-hmm. that you played it with, and it was like, oh yeah, that guy. Yeah. And then you'd think about other things that you did with that kid, and then you're like, huh? Like uh, crossfire, crossfire. You'll get caught up in the crossfire, crossfire. Crossfire. There's a kid in a leather jacket going, no. <laughs> the other kid's going, yeah. yeah. And someone's spinning away. I love that commercial. So the goal there, <laughs> since I don't uh-huh. know that anybody's played it, there's two guns. You're firing little metal balls. at these Silver little, bullets. Yeah, these little like marbly things that have little like shapes around them. Spinners on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're trying Was to knock them. I remember there was a star and like a square. Yeah. I don't know if there's any more than two. Hmm. The weird thing about that game was that I had a friend who got mad because we were playing it. He took all of the metal balls. There must have been like what? Like 40? He put them in his mouth. Yeah, I knew it. How did I know this? He went outside and he spit them all in the garden. Like in the dirt. What an asshole. I can't play that game anymore. Well, I know this person. No. No, I don't. I still hate him. I barely know this person. I defriended him right after that one. I went right on Facebook <laughs> and said, nope, not going to happen. Yeah, there was no Facebook either. The other thing is, like, how do kids know how to play these games, like, over vast dis- differences in generations and years? Yeah, because you and I were probably, what, an hour apart, maybe? Something ridiculous. Yeah, well, there's no way we, yeah, we. But, I mean, someone in California growing up our age was probably playing the same games without the internet. Hmm. It's weird, right? I think that's cool. There's also something to this. I was researching some of these. Like, um, I can't find some of the stuff I'm, I've already talked about tonight. If I looked hard enough on hard enough, I could probably find a Reddit post that was like, "Remember uh, when?" And then they go no, back to like, "How?" Like, no, I'm yeah, just, yeah, 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 yeah. Like they go, yeah, yeah, they reminisce. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, it's the only spot I'd be able to find it. There's no definitions for some of these things. Some there are. Um, check this one. So we all know what these are, but. Um, Jacks used to be a game. Yeah, you would like bounce a ball, be like a little rubber ball, and then you'd pick up jacks as it was bouncing, and then like somehow you would, like it would get lower and lower, and you try to like force yourself yeah. to pick up more. And at some point, I don't I know. I saw an old lady. She was like, "Oh my god, I think it was me- oh Peggy." There's a lady who had a crush on me. She was like 82, 88, somewhere in there, and. She somehow was talking about a gift for her son, and she smiled at me, and she said, I used to be the best at jacks. And I was like, excuse me? And she was like, I used to collect so many in the bouncer ball, and she had a name for it. And she was like, and I would swipe up the most out of anyone, and I just remembered jacks. And I was like, I didn't really know it was like a game. And she's like, ha, 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 son. I was the – she just kept going on and on, but she literally – was so happy remembering jacks and i was like they were just the pointy toy i didn't want to step on i never once played the yeah. game it was awful what? toys i was like that's the stupidest game but like that's maybe that's how people look at some of the games we're talking about today like that's the dumbest thing hmm. right how that in, um holy crap what was that game it's another old timey thing that nobody like i i've seen before i know what they are but i've never played the game what's the one like, where that's you why have, like, i was trying to get dice and you like you spin them out and you're trying Yahtzee. To... Yahtzee. I, don't I actually know. used to play that with my ex, and we had actually a lot of fun. We would play it and drink. I used to play that with uh, our mutual friend, Mike. Which one? Really? Yeah. I played Yahtzee, it a lot. Man? I don't know why. I That's guess it's, weird. It's a fair game. Anything with dice is usually like equal footing. Right, because so right, then it's a little bit of strategy, a little bit of chance, a little bit of this, that. Because mm-hmm. you have to figure out which one you're going to use. Because that would make it a good game, wouldn't it? Because then you get kind of a little mix yeah. of everything. Mm-hmm. So, so then uh, I'm looking at a list of all these traditional games. I came across apple bobbing, and I was like, yeah, that's the yeah. joke you do at, like, a Halloween party or something. I don't know. Yeah. It was a game. Like, consider that it was a game. Like, kids would do it five times many, in a week. How many apples you can bob? 
I, mean, I guess. No, I could do, not. Throw the apples I couldn't. Back in? I don't know. I couldn't do it more than once. Well, maybe, oh, yo, maybe it did it with like attractive girls there. And that's really like, they were like, oh, I hope I get Susan's apple. Ah, and they pull it out and they look and you're like, you got the apple bob head. Ah. <laughs> like, and uh, they have nights that they just remember the apple bobbing. And I'm like, I've never seriously apple bobbed. I just know what it is. Another one like that is musical chairs. I think I've played it in school a couple times, yeah. like a summer camp, mm-hmm. but I, I wouldn't consider that a fun game. You would never have music as a kid right you would never set it up so you'd be like let's do this multiple times and after one time you'd be bored. <laughs> yeah it's like that's like a gimmick right these aren't yeah. games these are gimmicks i guess i don't know marbles <laughs> it's a like, game i thought you just collected the round things that are cool like i think you hit shoot the them, marbles and then you shoot them, them with your thumb out like you pop them like, like that cro- like, not crochet coquette cro- croquet is that so you knock them into something like into what like I think for the marbles, you, like the the ones that you get to board? ricochet, they're like your marbles, and then you get to use them again. I think that was, okay. those are the rules. And then like one, whoever had the most marbles at the end, or whoever collected wins all the marbles, and keeps wins. them. Ooh. Yeah, your marbles Keepers. are upper stake. Wow, that's that's like it's like Need for Speed Three, uh, Pink Slip Edition or whatever. Yeah, wow. Oh, dear, what do you mean? Except, I didn't play that one. Oh, like um, it was the first Need for Speed where you could build up your car and then put it on the line for the race. Like you race for the pink slip. It was like, whew, supposed to make you real nervous. Cause the other player could win your car. Oh, the whole thing. Oh yeah. My God. That yeah. Does that make you look at you? You're nervous. <laughs> look at you. Cause I had my favorite. Anyway. I mean, you, you detailed that thing to down to the, down to the nubbin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you did. So how about pogs? Like I know what they were. They made a comeback during yeah, our generation, but, but no actually one played them. That's like uh, huh. beanie babies. Slammer. Like yeah, you could right. just no, collect these things baby. that look cool. Mm-hmm. Like, so was that nostalgia happening? I guess while we were young, we just we didn't really know it. I guess so. There's like different designs. Like back then, I think it was easier to make things a collection because it felt rare. Like I had a collection of Goosebumps, Goosebump books. You couldn't go on Amazon, right? You couldn't go to Amazon to do it, right? No, and you had to wait for like the new batch of stuff and then buy them. That's weird. We, my mom and Nadine, were obsessed with um Beanie Babies, and they would know the local. I keep wanting to say Etsy. It was a store, but they would call and be like, "When's your Brainy? coming?" No, but I know Zany Brainy sold them. They had it in it. It was like a name, Clark's, or ah, oh, it's gonna bug me. Huh. This is weird. Yeah, but they would call the place, Gary's or Clark's. It was a first name, but it was in the Roosevelt Mall. Damn. But they would call and they would be like, "They're getting the shipment Thursday. They're getting it Thursday." And like I guess grown ass adults would be there swinging on each other trying to get these uh, beanie babies for five ninety nine or whatever the hell they cost. And they're always a losing proposition. Uh, Princess die! One. Princess die! One is out. Oh my god! Oh my god! She just died this week. We need this one. <laughs> Poor princess die. Hmm. Hmm. What about other? How about Scrabble? I was just going with. Yeah, Scrabble's a cool one, and um, we play it in this house sometimes. Oh yeah, my parents really like to use like uh, words with and, friends. Or... Yeah, well, we, words with friends, and then boggle. Mm-hmm. Like any any of the word combination games, boggle, it yeah. changes your brain. I think it makes you like a touch smarter if you're mixing and matching letters and trying to make words out of them. Oh, it definitely does. It's a good it's a good way to go. Yeah. So they always enforce type types of games that would try to get me to learn something. I bet like um, I call them summer camp games. I had a whole bunch on here. Steal the bacon, um, egg, we'll duck, steal duck, the, we'll goose. Steal the bacon. Duck, duck, steal goose. the bacons where you had two lines of teams, and the camp counselor would give everyone a number, and then everyone on the same, the opposite team, a number also, and then she'd say, they put the red ball. What do you call that ball? The uh, the gym ball, the red ball. Like a dodgeball. It's like a kickball. Yeah, it's like a kickball. Okay, it's bigger. It's this big. It's red. Rubber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Till there. Yeah. yeah, 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 and um. You would put it in the middle of the field between the two teams. You say, I'm thinking steal the bacon, number four. And both teams, number four, would have to get up as fast as they could, get it, and bring it back to their side before the other number four could. Interesting game. Um, Kickball. That's like Red Rover. Alaskan kickball. That's funny because everyone in my house was talking about Red Rover, and I was like, I've never even heard of this game. 
So please explain it because it was very popular on the uh, on the lists I saw. So the whole goal was that you'd call somebody to run over to your side and you have a chain of people that would try to hold their arms together. And I think if they broke through, then they got to go back yeah. to their side. But if you didn't and you hold, held strong, you kept them on your side. And then you won the game by catching everybody on your side. Okay, that makes sense. I think that's how it worked. Sounds like sharks and minnows. It's something that... um. They had us play with my four-year-old and all these other four-year-olds. It was terrible. <laughs> they didn't know what they were doing. But they the sharks distracted. are a team that would always work together and catch the minnows, and minnows would have to run across and not get caught. Hmm. But but you did touch on something with run at the, the linked people as hard as they could to try yeah. and break the chain. So what I wanted to get into was that a lot of these games were actually dangerous that we barely remember. Yeah, you, I mean, you could like throw an elbow at somebody and definitely bust them up. If you're a dirty Red Rover player. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine there were. Yeah. So hold on. Do you, have you ever heard Buck Buck? Is this like this a, a... It's a Philadelphia area uh, game that back. my... Yes. My parents' generation played it. Um, you would get a, a chain of people, right? It's four people long, and you'd all hold each other like around the hips, and you'd hold on tight. And they'd be leaned over. It looked like a human centipede, but a fun version. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all holding each other. And someone would come running from the back and try and break the chain. Huh. And they'd, they'd jump as hard as they could and just land on the chain somewhere and hope to break it. And anyway, you would try and hold strong. Oh, and eventually, you'd get like six people, seven people, and you'd get like a, a buck buck chain breaker. Someone who weighed like 600 pounds. I'm making that up. But like a heavy, a heavy guy. Heavy, heavy and he's going. He's jumping. And, and everyone's trying to hold on, and the whole pile would, like, knock down, and people would be, you know, it gets pretty violent at times, I believe, and competitive. This is like... You're a, in, like, 7th or 6th or 7th or 8th grade. Like, you're getting... You're yeah. wearing your full shoes. You're going to deck someone in the head. You're probably going to kick someone. Thank God children are more... Yeah. This is a game adorable. like uh, lawn darts. Like, you throw a lawn dart in there, oh. and it's like, oh, this is fun and exciting until it impales somebody. It's like, oh, we didn't even consider that. <sighs> Oh my God! Your leg. Yeah. Really sorry. Actually, did you know? How about this one? There's this one we played all the time that didn't come up in my brain. Mm -hmm. Mercy. Did you play Mercy every day? Like we played it every day in my school. Like just with kids who I hated or didn't like or mean kids. Which it's one? where you lock your fingers hand to hand and then you twist, twist them. And whoever uh, gives yeah. up first, just yes. they lose. You would grip the fingers, you twist, you try and pull, you go over the top, you can go under. Either way, and the other person would try not to give up even though they yeah. were totally out leveraged. You'd just be like, mercy, mercy, mercy. And then you'd have to let go and be like, ha ha, nice. Yeah. Also the, That's the game. Playground. Yeah. How's that a game? How's that a game though? That's almost like Thumb War though. You played Thumb War, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Same idea. One, two, like, three, four, that I declare game? Thumb War. And then you try to pin yeah. each other's thumbs. Yes. You used to and then play like that sneak with attack. My... Yeah. And sneak attack. One of my Mike. mom's friends always played that with me. I thought she was so cool. I was like, yeah, thumb war, let's go. <laughs> Looking back. Yeah. <laughs> she was. She is pretty cool, actually. But it's, I don't know. It's like How about bloody games. knuckles? I used to punch each other's knuckles, though, right? That's all. Yeah, yeah, until someone gives up. Hmm. There's another variant with um a coin where you flick the coin at the person's knuckles and then it's the other person's turn. They spin it and they gotta flick it at your knuckles. With oh, a uh, paper football. Yeah, you oh yeah, yeah. Oh. Your, your buddy, your buddy Mike was very adamant about making the perfect paper football. Oh yeah. He there would was... fold it a certain way and tell everyone he was wrong, and he would spend all day folding one fold and then fold it again. He was. We had a version of bloody knuckles that was um like those. Uh, mechanical pencils that were yellow and you could take the spring out you could bend the spring yeah. in half twist it and take the eraser out and then put it and make it like a little hammer and then you could pull back the spring and that thing would hurt like hell as soon as it hit you it'd be like whack and it'd be like oh and then you'd like you have to keep going and grade like, school or high school or what this is grade school this is like okay yeah grade, grade school is when a lot of this violence comes out dude I was making sure. I don't know what you're doing. How about slapsies? Everyone plays that one. Oh, you yeah. put your hands on top of the other guy, and then you Sweet. smack their hands. Yeah. Then you try and get their hand. <clears throat> and if they pull off all the way, you get a free smack. Mm -hmm. These are like summer camp games, and I don't know who tells you how to play them or anything, but they all. I like how inherently they all like understood it is. Like the moment you see it happen, you know exactly what's yeah. happening. Like you don't need any right. rules. You just need to see it once or maybe twice. Right. And and a kid doesn't really try and change the game ever or 
it's weird because those are the first things we follow to a T. Like there's something sacred about mercy. Like I'm not gonna. You can't cheat. Like, like be, I've never. Yeah, seen you, a don't guy cheat. Cheat. you don't cheat. Yeah, like, yeah. And if they did, they just wouldn't play anymore. No one will play them. Like there's yeah. like a code. It's a weird code. Um, <laughs> chicken with a knife. Have you ever heard of this game? No. It's where you throw knives at each other in the grass at, at your like feet. First person to chicken out loses. I was like, what? <laughs> Apparently, this is like probably a generation right before ours. Yeah. Another one that was popular. Generation roof idiots. tag. Roof tag. Like you run across roof tops. Yeah. Yes, to tag each other. It was only in certain neighborhoods. Obviously, I was like, no. This one, garage slide. You ever heard of that one? Is where you close it and you try to slide underneath. Yeah, I was like, awesome. Oof. I never. I <laughs> yeah. It does sound cool, right? Um, Superman. Apparently, I came across a bunch of times. It's where if there's like five or seven of you and you guys see a car coming down the road, one guy lays on the ground and everyone else pretends to beat him up to see if the car will stop. <laughs> and then if they do, everyone, everyone just takes off and runs, including the guy on the ground because no one wants to get in trouble. But it's more like just to see. And I was like, man, kids do that? And I was like, more more than one kid. Like kids everywhere do this. It's so funny. How about King of the Hill or like Kill the Man with a Ball? Those games get pretty wild, pretty violent, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Try to knock him off his pegs. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then I got into the ones now that we kind of make fun of, but aren't that much different than these, like the choking game. You bang that? on each other's chest. Don't know any of these. So like you're you go like this, and your buddy bangs on your chest until you turn red, and then you're like you release, <sighs> and it's like you feel good because you're getting all your air back. And parents were like afraid their kids were gonna die. Their kids were dumb, but so were a lot know. of kids. Hmm. It's like a knockout game. Oh, well, I think I've heard of. Is this where you slap somebody like upside the head when they don't punch know? punch someone upside the head like uh, as hard as you can? But so many people uh, just like you can. So that's that's a disclaimer right there. Is that so many people can get knocked out standing upright, and any way they fall, it could be very damaging to their body. Very. Oh, damaging. dude, you can knock out all your teeth. Can you imagine that? Holy oh, that'd shit. be terrible. How about um? For life. How about Indian burns? Like they oh, were like a Indian thing. Rock. I don't know why you'd give them. Yeah, why would you give that to someone? I don't even know if that's a game. It's just what know. kids did to each other. And I was like, ow. It's like purple nurples too. <laughs> yep. So then I came across this one, which I thought was it. It's in the um what kids do nowadays. It's like sack tapping, and I didn't even click on the link. I was like, oh. we we did it's that where, when I was little. You didn't do that. Oh, either? I'm a. I'm a hundred percent. We did it in high school. Pantsing. If I walked by, if I walked by Jero or Jay to the Keller, little tap, like, little, oh my god, I would snap him as hard as I could, like this, just <laughs> snap. Especially if he wasn't looking or talking to somebody, and he would just drop, and I would, I, it's so much fun. Or like hitting hitting kids in the lockers, like as hard as you can when they're not looking, yeah, like that's that how kind you of a me. thing. Yeah, you'd break. Yeah, it's good, it's good stuff, isn't it? Yeah. It's there's something inherently awesome about like these violent games we're describing, right? Yeah, as long as you're not the victim, like not a true victim, like you can be the victim and still like get the guy back. Right, like as long as you, you understand there's a knee. balance. Yeah, like if you tear your ACL, but you could tear your ACL doing simple stuff. So I'm sure it's happened. Yeah, or lose all your teeth getting what the knockout game. Someone done. played Red Rover and like got their eye popped out of socket or something, like and screwed up their vision for the rest of their life. I'm sure it happened. Well, I mean, they could try to like duck and get clipped, and then they hit the. With yeah. ground hard. I mean, a lot of random oh, stuff could happen. Yeah, so I imagine it did happen. Not often, but, you know, I guess that's the price you pay. I don't know. But but it makes me think the way we talk about kids today, how they're, they all, all they do is play violent video games and everything else. I'm like, maybe we're just all inherently violent. <laughs> I think we are. Definitely makes sense, right? And the games are... They're cool. I don't know. I think I think we're gonna miss out on some of the physical stuff. Yeah. So that. What do you think's going on? It's tough to say because we're not kids, and the kids themselves are playing random mm -hmm. games. My son even brings home games that I don't even he starts singing songs and stuff. I'm like, I don't even know. I don't. Know. I don't even know. I mean, it's kind of. I guess I'm waiting for a period where I can under actually understand what he's saying to have him mm -hmm. tell me what he knows because it's going to be a game. whole new generation of games and how they play them and he'll be probably surprised at what games I used to play that probably don't work anymore anyway. Right. Like, uh, like Rock'em Sock'em Robots? Is that, that must be still a thing, right? 
I guess so. I, it, it was before me. Did you play Rock'em Sock'em Robots? I knew what they yeah. were. Oh, yeah. Did you? I don't know if it I was never like played an with expensive anyone. game I didn't or have something. one. Maybe it was. I doubt it. I don't know. Maybe it was. Maybe maybe that's why. Maybe it's, Your it's, upper echelon. Upper echelon. It's one of those things that you, <laughs> it, I don't know that it requires skill other than jamming a button over and over again. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you've seen I feel the like game. it would be too... You've seen the game that it's uh they have like whipped cream or um shaving cream on a uh, hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's gone three cranks or three buttons yeah. or whatever. Yeah. They're yeah, yeah. all trying to slap it the other way, get the other guy next to him. Like that sort of game I don't think existed back then. Mm -mm. No. Wouldn't have been hard to make, I guess. But neither were the games that they made, like Hungry Hungry Hippo and stuff like that. Yeah. Why does that there's another game, like Kerplunk is like in that family. Kerplunk was kinda cool. Yeah. yeah, it was like we had like a cylinder and you had a bunch of balls and then you had you're pulling out the, the sticks. Straw. Yeah, and you're trying not to have it go kerplunk on you. I think you would lose yes. by having the most balls. You'd win More? by having yeah, because movies. sometimes only a couple would spill out. Yeah, just a couple little drippy drips. You ever play like Thin Ice? Yeah, almost the same game, right? But like different, obviously. Yeah, don't wake Daddy. Like a... Remember that one? I don't remember. Don't wait. What's Don't Wake Daddy? That yeah, sounds... it was the same thing. There's like uh, you you move around a board, and then one says like pump it five times, and you you push the button on the sleeping dad five times, and he would just keep oh, sleeping. And you're like, yeah. Oof. but if you up. did it wrong, he'd pop up, and his hat would fall off, and he'd be like, ah, oh, you woke daddy. <laughs> what what kind of a message was that? I'm not really sure. <laughs> I don't know. Was daddy hung over? Was he? You know. That reminds me of uh, Operation. You're trying... Yeah. That, that one was one of the good. OGs, wouldn't it? I mean, oh, it'd make an awful no. noise, but I feel like it would shock you, it too. It buzzed. Yeah, I think it would buzz on you. Like, it would just vibrate your hand. I don't think it was a real shock. I think it was like a like a fake shock. I always thought that was like a little electricity. <laughs> you were like, oh, my God, we're getting electrocuted. That one was a Dan's good game. Because, you. I mean, the tension, if you had, like, a few people around the board staring at you as you're picking out, like, the funny bone. And it was like, <laughs> and then everyone just, like, crack up. Ah! Right now. <laughs> right. That is a cool thing where it, it there's a social aspect where people are around you. That's like uh, Jenga. Yeah. Ah, Jenga's fun. Yeah, yeah, Jenga is cool. Drinking Jenga, baby. Woo! The other thing that springs up, we this came up in our drinking episode. There's different rules in different areas. Did you ever play Foursquare? I did. So, I guess my rule was that okay. you couldn't let it bounce twice in your square, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, once in and then beyond. So, like, you could bounce it real hard once and they'd have to run to get it. Yeah. So it still counts as being in their square. Yeah. And then they have to hit it back into someone else's square. Someone else's square. Correct. That was a lot like um like the games with a tennis ball that I was really good at, which I don't know if I'm allowed to say. Chink? It was just the name of the game. I've because heard of, of the that. chink between the wall and the floor. You you have to use a flat hand and you hit the ball and it has to hit the ground and then the wall and then it's the next person's turn. You have an order. And that person now has to hit it before it bounces twice and it's do the exact ball. same. Has racket ball real. without a racket, right? Yeah, but you, and you use the wall. There's no, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I guess it was the same thing. Uh -huh. But you could really play play fools up. It was, yeah, yeah, a little bit like tennis by yourself. Yeah, That's like the time I, I would play racquetball with my one of my best friends in college. And like we'd run around like idiots and <laughs> it was a fun time and you got a lot of exercise. Yeah. I played like somebody uh, I was sort of friends with after a while of playing racquetball with my other friend, he literally was big enough that he could stand in the middle and just not oh, move. Just... He just would smack it without even moving. And change sides. Yeah. He'd make me sprint all the way around and he would just like look at me and laugh because it was like, I guess that's not, how, I mean, he knew how to play it the best way. To right. He knew manage. how to play it better probably. Yeah. Right. I don't know if it was a physical advantage or maybe he just like was smarter about it. Could be both. Could be both. Mm -hmm. The um the other thing you just touched on is like the physical nature of these games. Like, if we were playing like Manhunt, uh, I it was so funny. Like again, in my old neighborhood, when it would just turn dark, I can still picture us all playing. And every kid has a personality. I know which kids are usually slower. I know which kids are just the younger brothers. That's why they're there. And like I know which girls were like mean and fast, and you didn't want to get seen by them. <laughs> And you would just like lurk between the shadows and it would be funny. Like it was like a little bit like war to us. And I'd see Scott or someone and I'd be like, Scott, we need to get over there. And he's like, I know. They got Andrew, they got Casey, and they got your sister Natalie or something. And I'd be like, well, there's only two left. And he's like, well, I don't know where James is. He's running down the hallway. I haven't seen Vu all game. He could be inside. No one even knows. And then he'd be like, 
So what we got to do is, and he'd be like looking over his shoulder, and we're in like the dark, and we're like looking over here, and he's like, I want you to go up the entire driveway and come around the top and make a diversion. I need you to make a lot of noise. I'll run to the tree and sprint and free everyone, okay? I need time, though. You have to buy time. And like he'd be like, all right, I'll do what I can. There's no promises. And in my mind, we're both out of breath and here, but then like we go on our missions and we go to do our thing. And it's just like, damn, dude. No one, I don't do anything like that anymore. Like you go balls to the wall playing a game, I guess. I don't know. I love it. I miss it too. It's the, it's, when was the last time that you had, I mean, how many people are playing this game? There's probably at least a dozen, right? Right. It's around 10 to 12. I think we could get. When was the last time that you had a dozen of your friends playing anything? Anything. Canadian baseball. Yeah. (laughs) That's right. Two dozen of us in there. But (laughs) it doesn't happen. I mean, the pure joy of just having that, like, people, all people that you like in the same vicinity interacting in a way that you can't predict and then i mean the same yeah. thing with like drinking games you do drinking games later on and you have all these yeah, kind of like same, random aspects yeah, it's, to it it's it's a lot of the same ideas isn't it yeah it's good stuff i miss, miss it, it. Ooh, hold on big jump big jump oh double ice cube drop and no spill hell yeah oh, good job so common ones uh the floor is lava oh that's an awesome one it's one of the most obvious ones that I, I mean, it is. there's so many times where you remember that game and like going through your entire house, like dropping pillows and you try <laughs> pillows to like, and couch cushions and yeah. Or you build forts with blankets that? and yeah. yeah. Ah, fort building. I didn't even think of that yeah. one. That one's that counts. That counts. Yeah, it definitely does. And like it's... my kid, he, so it's funny, you know, um, I, I referenced this before and I don't know for how deep we'll get into it, but kids nowadays play video games more than they do outdoor stuff. Mm hmm. Probably for safety reasons. A, I don't live in the city anymore. I'm suburby, so it's like everyone's further apart. Yeah. It's not as organized, uh, you know. And you couldn't watch TV. I mean, you could watch TV, but it does it's not going to be like the, the wrong program comes on. You're just like, okay, I'm gone for an hour until whatever comes on. Yeah, it's not like you can Netflix or um, DVR your favorite YouTube shows it, or, yeah. or, right, YouTube no, it. Or... A tablet. There's probably one TV in the house that works. Yeah, yeah, right. And then, like I said, a video game is a whole different game. It's like you can't play Nintendo with four people. Like, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You could get away with two, maybe three, but once you get to four or five, you can't. Nowadays, these games are so advanced and awesome looking, and everyone has one. You can all play together online. Mm-hmm. It's, it's cool. I'm not against it. Yeah. But my kid's growing up. He kind of knows what video games are. He's not. He's really. He's really good at Overwatch. Good lord. Um, I'm like, oh my god. Maybe I should enter you. Maybe I should make this full time. Um, I will make you learn to hate this, and you will be so good at it. <laughs> but I'm uh, so proud. But when he plays games, like I'm like, how's he gonna play games? Like, is he gonna build forts and stuff? He he talks about like Overwatch or um other videos and Paw Patrol and stuff like that. And he just pretends that we're all them and he's playing Fort and he wants to throw uh, bombs at people and like, Oh, it blew up the whole house over there. We're free. And then like, we have to run to the next area and we're hiding from bad guys. Oh, bad guys are coming hide. And, and a little bit like, I'm not worried about him playing these games. I, I, I don't worry about the whole generation. I think they're still going to play all these games. Right. Hmm. Even if they change a little bit, I don't know. Like, what you are think they... they won't play physical games as much? I don't know, because they still have to go to school, right, and physically interact. So, like around seventh or eighth grade, I had a Game Boy, and I had like Pokemon whatever on it. And Yellow, I remember, green, whatever the hell it was. Yeah, yeah, I have no idea. But I remember like there was a group of us that had that, and that was when I kind of realized that you could like still be electronic out in the schoolyard as long mm-hmm. as you like kept it hidden a little bit. And every one of us would like stand around in a circle and like trade Pokemon. Like somehow it would, I don't know how you would do that. Like, I don't think it would communicate really. Maybe you could like take out your cartridge and then like they could do something and save it in a way. So do you think you were imagining it? I don't. I think and everyone actually, was going along with it? I'm going to have to look. And That's see. weird. Trade. Like, I don't know how it would communicate. Game Boy. How to trade Pokemon in a Game Boy you could somehow you could so i didn't i don't game boy advance lets you do it i don't know how 
Hal. Like, or, I don't know how I cool. would have figured that out. I guess one of my friends figured it out somehow through maybe his older brother or something. I don't I know. Guess. But today, a, a kid could have <clears throat> God knows what in his backpack and just bring that outside. So maybe they're not playing physical games as much. Maybe. And I guess they are still interacting, but... They still play. It, it's also safer. Like, can you imagine? I do have memories of even playing games of Fortnite with you or something. And I'm picking the most recent game because I, I have memories of that. That's a real memory, right? Uh-huh. If you're all huddled together in a house in Fortnite and you're like, there's only five people left, we're going to win. And that one person kills all four of you. <laughs> and like, <laughs> you are all huddled in a house and just there's rockets everywhere and everyone's yelling. Trying to figure out what like, to do. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. And then that person wins and you're all like, oh, how embarrassing. It's still a memory. Is that any different than a memory of playing outside and whatever? I understand you lose the fitness aspect, but memory wise, yeah. it's not better or worse, right? I guess. I don't know. I went to a college that had like an excessive amount of nerds. And there were people that would just play games in day in, day out. They're like some of my friend's roommates, they would literally sit at the desk and they would drink soda and eat pizza and they wouldn't move so they'd have like a they put a soda can like on the desk to the right they would just keep putting soda cans there until it was a waterfall of soda cans if you looked on the floor the floor had these ruts in it like the floor was like kind of black around them except where the ruts were and it was white because they just kept moving with a chair oh my god so it's like that excess of video game playing is not good so i don't know that Right, Maybe there is future generations of us are going to be really set back by not physically interacting. Well, here that's weird because it contrasts directly with like how our athletes are becoming more physical specimens. Do you think it's just splitting it? Like we're at a dividing rod. There's not a lot in between. Either you play video games and you eat all the crappy stuff that's cheap now and the fast food that's everywhere, and you play video games that are super awesome and super fun to play, or you're like a super track star athlete's six foot six now you run faster than an athlete did in the past and you bench more and you have a training regiment like do you think it's just like i wonder how varied those people are it's like if you're probably the best not. at like a sport do you think you get automatically like no, you're not round you know no, you get think about it. i mean like a group of people that are the best at something to like see how good you are versus them like it well think about it a football gymnast. player 30 years ago had a had a job on the off season. That's true. He was like, oh, I'm a roofer. I really have to go to work. Yeah. It's like, uh, of course, the guy who specializes his entire life has training regiments, breathing regiments, works off season, works with specialized coaches is going to be way better at the game. But guess what? The price for doing that is his time. He's clearly not as fun, interesting, has a good life, so is well rounded at all. Michael no, Jackson they're... syndrome, where you, you yeah, trade your childhood correct. for some other career. And then you look back and wish you could get your childhood back, but you can't. Like your childhood is probably one of the most valuable things you could possibly have, right? Yeah, I kind of agree. You can't you can't get it back. There's no way. Although, if you're a rich grown man, you kind of recreate your childhood. It would look really creepy. You build a playground in your backyard and <laughs> bought a Ferris you wheel and invited kids some kids play. over. It's <sighs> the same thing through like high school and college. Like, honestly, like, once you get to college, you are a different person than everyone else that's in college and in high school. Like, you'll never be able to go back to that and be back. integrated as a student, as a person of that age. No, you can't. So, like, those years, you should probably go with the flow and cherish it and try to make the best of it. You should. And these years, Though... what we're in, who the hell cares? No one cares about us anymore. <laughs> No, you're right. Red Rover, Red Rover, Nick, can Red you come Rover, over? Come over. And his girlfriend's like, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, if uh, we want to talk about old games, one of the old favorites I found was "Here Comes an Old Soldier from Botany Bay." That's a game. A game on like computer? No game. Like it's a game kids used to play. I have no idea what this game Here is. Here comes an old soldier from Botany Bay. Do, 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 do. I'm not sure if I'm singing it right. I just found it and I was like, what? This is the longest name for a kid's game I've ever heard. <laughs> and um, Here comes an old soldier from Botany Bay. What do you got for him today? And you would say, well, I'm Jimmy. I got him a hat. And you put a hat on the kid. And then someone else would say, here comes an old soldier from Botany Bay. And someone else would be like, what do you have for him today? And someone would say, I have a mustache. And they'd put a fake mustache on him. 
Sorry. It was like, who who the stole most... the cookie from the cookie jar? That was an oh, I still <clears throat> my first best friend was a kid in kindergarten. I think it was Hank. And it was my like first friend. This is my first memory of having a friend, like someone who's my friend. Mm-hmm. And we played that game in school and you would who stole the cookie from the cookie jar? And you would say, Who was it? Was it you? And I'd say, It was Hank. And I would laugh and it went to Hank and they, he did it. And then it was like, all right, you have to pick someone, Hank. And he was like, it was Nick. And it's like, well, you can't pick the same person. He was like, it was Nick. And they're like, okay. <laughs> so let it go. And then I did it and I said, it was Hank. And everyone was like, this is the least inclusive thing I've ever seen. You two are not it. And then they just moved on. Yeah. But I, that's one of my first memories was me and Hank just laughing because we wanted to be, that do, was it. Do you think the, the root of the game is that you get everyone involved and you verify mm-hmm. that, that they can actually speak and say the words that you're saying? Because that's... And like, the name? Well, I think it's a name identification thing. You're trying to familiarize each other with each other? That makes yeah. Sense. Well, and make sure the it's kid nice knows breaker. people's names. Yeah. It's an icebreaker for like four-year-olds and five-year-olds. I don't even know if my kid plays it. <laughs> we'll probably do that I in the office. Idea. I guarantee some office somewhere says that. That's so awesome. <laughs> I'll sit in the circle out <laughs> in the atrium. Oh. All dressed in ties, suits and ties and dresses. Dressed up to the nines. Yeah. Red Rover, Red Rover. Like, we're talking about all this? Like, what do you think? I'm not trying to end the episode on this, so we have to keep going. But, like, what if you have a disability or, like, you're not, like, you breathing troubles or walking problems or everything? I'm sure you played the games. But, like, if you're playing tag, you're clearly the weakest link. This It would be unfair to tag someone you just tagged. But yeah. it's also clearly mean to keep running from that kid. Can you imagine playing tag for an hour and he's just, he's just chasing you and he can't get you or she or he or whatever? Huh. I, I don't know. I, maybe there that's where one, like a true creative kid comes in there and figures out a way to make it even more fun. Maybe this is where the strange prob- rules come oh. from. Oh, dude, I would, I would totally. I could imagine a scenario where you could create new rules and different addendums, which are really cool. But it takes a good group and someone who's got leadership and like, maybe yeah. that's where leadership comes in. Maybe I don't know. Hmm. Because I could see people like if they're playing Red Rover and you have somebody in a wheelchair, like everyone's going to entertain the idea of that person breaking yeah. through. You, like the person who oh, says, yeah. "No, I'm not going to let this guy through." Is the he's the <gasps> asshole of the group? He's it's a psychopath. There. That's another thing you learn from these games. Uh huh. You're starting to learn who the psychopaths are, who the weird kids are, who the ultra competitive. Really, dude? You're going to beat up my sister? She's like four years younger than you. You didn't have to tag her that hard, dude. Let's relax. Like, <laughs> they can't let it go. You run into all these different groups. The kid who like just keeps wandering, he's not even paying attention. He's like, what? You're it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, like you run into all sorts of weird stuff. So you, and the friendships, and who always tags who, and who always avoids tagging who. Mm-hmm. Like you know what I mean? You kind of mm-hmm. it start. That's where it starts. It starts to build up. You didn't mention uh, Nerf guns, like the Nerf blasters. <sighs> yep. So this was the thing. Like we would play. You know, you just shoot each other, but it gets more structured as you go along. You'd be watching like of course, uh, Amer- rules. American gladiators. Gladiators start to laser. Like, yeah. <laughs> what were the? I almost oh. said blazer. That was from. Look up the real names. Um, Titan, Laser, Earthquake. Like they had really epic <laughs> forces did. of nature names. I'm looking, looking. Oh, keep going, keep going. Okay, Tornado. here you go. Tornado. Go ahead. You got some names for me? Yeah. Lace, Zap, Gemini. Wait, hold on, Nitro. hold on. Give me, give me, give me some. Give me Gemini, Nitro. Oh my God. Give me <laughs> what year? What year is this? Oh, this is like 1990. Okay, so like there guns. are these people, super muscly people. Are they all Olympians or no? I thought they were all like wrestlers, like cast off wrestlers. Oh, maybe they were wrestlers. I, that can make sense. Really buff people in leotards that have code names that would like shoot Nerf balls at each other from, or at, mm-hmm. at average Joes from across the room. Everyone was wearing headgear and they would try and stop you from completing a goal that could earn you money. It was like a game show. Not a game show, like a contest show. I don't know. I, I love, actually I love, I love this as a child. I mean, they they legitimately yeah, I, were so battling high. each other and fighting and like you oh, have dude. a guy like going across like some sort of like dude. rooftop scaling thing and like and he's he's, he's buff the as hell and he's yeah. wearing a, a leotard and he has like a name tag just as like blazer or late give me the names again go Siren, ahead, now we're ready. sky dallas hawk jazz 
Tank, Rebel, <laughs> Electra. It has to be a one or Viper. two syllable name. Yeah. Viper. Thunder, Electra. Ice, Diamond, J. Yeah, that's so awesome. Tower. And then they would um they would have these weapons at different stations where they could shoot nerf balls at you. <laughs> which is funny because you could be a scrawny who knows what, but it's so cool when a dude who's like bench is 380 is shooting a nerf gun at some average joe just trying to yeah. walk across a, a ladder and you're like boom, 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 boom. Mm-hmm. that was that was badass That's <clears throat> i remember the one with the the ring they'd be holding from the ring and like the gladiator would catch them and then they'd mm-hmm. they'd be like essentially humping them <laughs> to fall off <laughs> and oh, like no, i don't oh. Oh yeah. So they're hanging on and a gladiator would grab like their part of their body and just start wiggling to try and weigh them down. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. That there's crazy. a list of uh, the notes on what happened to all the gladiators. Like half of them got injured. <laughs> like injured, never oh, turned. Injured, it... never turned. Wow. So, so it is like the WWE a little bit. Does the WWE have a lot of injuries? I mean, I know a lot of people get... Like I've seen some, but not Dude. many. Broken necks, broken backs, broken arms, twisted knees in the middle of matches and stuff. You can look up individual matches where something went wrong and it's supposed to go for another 10 minutes and so and so is supposed to win, but he'll point to his knee and like call the other guy over and be like, ah, ah, we need to end this. And there's like a weird half pin before any finishing moves and everything. And he's like, oh, he wins. And they're like, everyone's huh? like, what? It just started. Well, he broke his back. <laughs> it's like, oh. Hmm. So he needed to go to the ER. Yeah, okay. dude, wrestling heads. I follow a bunch of wrestling heads. Wrestling gets too deep for me. It's like, whoa. I could never get into that for some reason. I thought it was stupid. Maybe. Did you you said wrestling though outside? Like kids be wrestling? Did they put try and put the actual moves on each other? Yeah. It's like you and I yeah. boxing. Like trying to figure out how to box when we're like teenagers. Like that was dumb. You know what? I only I only boxed one other person. Mike. Mike. Because yeah. Mike was good at he did all that kung fu crap. But he was shorter, dude. He had no no arms. You beat him. Who knows, dude? When we went, did any of us land like more than a punch? Usually, it's like one good punch, and you're like Whoa, one punch. Well, hold on a second. That's about it. And the rest is just staying at a distance and keeping your arms up. And then the next day, your arms hurt because you just kept these up at the whole time. Yeah, it teaches you that yeah. there's there's not a lot of dynamic things you can do other than maybe like you're you're going like left or right back and forward i but think you can but it becomes well quickness. when you're a professional well right and when you're a professional us as amateurs we had these the idea of the bubble where i can get hit and the idea of the bubble where you can get hit we're like this far apart yeah. <laughs> the whole time when you're a professional you probably get this close so there's way more stuff going on and you can get in and out and move and block us we're like ooh, let's just wait till he puts his hands down and just walks towards me i'll get him it <laughs> yeah. never happens you know what i mean you're just awkwardly standing there waiting for the other person <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah but this gladiator um, american gladiators that led into like nerf mm-hmm. guns and the way you would like someone would be oh, charging yeah. the guy with a gun and they <clears throat> yeah like the rapid fire one you have the one that was just like a oh a yeah chain gun. the chain gun the chain yeah. gun i remember the chain gun i oh. i'm waiting for those days where i can actually have my son like charge at me and i have a little maybe a bow we had a really good bow and arrow that yeah. you just pull back a little bit and it would just shoot, but it was really good. Get people when they're not looking and just hits them in the side of the face. They're like, they instantly know what happened. <laughs> so all these games are violent. They're all crazy. They're all creative. Um, like I said, with my tennis ball thing, I um, bought tennis balls three years ago, like a three pack. And it changed my life. Like one time I pulled over because I was doing my delivery job Mm -hmm. and I had the tennis balls with me. And I was like, it's been like 10 years since I played with a tennis ball at that point. So I took them and started throwing them against the wall and catching it, trying one handed, trying go crazy, bounce them off the ground, bounce them off here. It was like just a big concrete wall. It was like, goes on for yards and yards and yards and yards and went like, I don't know, three stories high. All concrete, no windows, no fear. Hmm. I had a blast. So every like like this, I did, three months ago, I changed jobs and I was like, let's buy some tennis balls just in case. So I got these and I love to bounce them, walk with them. You can do whatever with them. You can cut them in half, play half ball. You can play wire ball. You can play step ball. You can play wall ball, baseball. You can play wall ball. You can play suey. You can play ass suey. up, uh, red ass. 
You played Suey? Yeah. You're the only other person who even knows what that is. Where one person would throw it, and if they, whoever could catch it one-handed, everyone would have to run and touch the wall. Yeah, yeah. And last, was it, if someone threw it and hit you before you got to the wall, you had to go against the wall with your head towards the wall, and everyone someone would line up and you. peg your ass? Yeah. yeah that was awesome. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> Again, we go back to violence and pegging people <laughs> yeah. with tennis balls. It's always funny. <clears throat> it is. It's funny, though, like in, I guess in high school, there'd be certain sports that I didn't want to play for some reason. Like, and I would mm-hmm. just sit, the, like, I'd try to sit them out. Like the gym teacher would be mad, but I'd be like, I don't want to play basketball. For some reason, I didn't like to play certain sports. So like, this is a message if you're, I guess there's no kids probably listening, but if, if you're young enough or set in your ways, if, if someone says, yeah, if someone says, would you like to try this? And you have no idea how to do it. Like there's no shame in failing hard at doing it. Like you should try just it and freaking it do out. it. Yeah. I know there's so many times where I probably should have just thrown myself out there and failed that I would never have regretted. I mean, I regret not trying. So that's my that's my moral of the story. Ding. It's a good decision. Actually, that's a good way to put it. Hmm. Here I have a list of games. I just love it. Oh, go ahead. I remember one. I wasn't going to uh, go through the list. Thank eighth grade when we were all knew we were graduating the last week all they did was throw out all these games and there was like connect four was one of them so we had connect four tournaments for about a straight week but the teachers were like really? there's no way these connect- kids are going to learn anything <laughs> connect four is kind of cool i didn't play a lot of connect four we had it how about like tic-tac-toe is that a game that's like a, a game that kids play from like age whatever on and then there's cheat moves yeah. if you start here and the person goes here you already win it's like whoa the pre preset understanding of what you need to do to win. So it's like whoever goes first can just dictate it if they want to be an asshole. Right. And then something. the best you can do is tie them. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Force the tie. Mm-hmm. So it's not really a game because the, the, <clears throat> whoever goes first has a definitive advantage by far. Is there a set amount of moves you can make? Or is it like... I would imagine there is. Yeah, there's only so many possibilities so that... Right. Like if you go first, you're probably like down. a majority percentage to win. Probably. Makes sense. Hmm. How about card games? We didn't really get into it, but um, mm. because we did it in drinking games. But there's card games you can play, like in all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Like, how about this? Like, old ladies used to get together, get together and play Pinochle and stuff like that. And there'd be rummy groups, right? R- rummy I liked, but I don't remember how to play it. Uh, I just played a few weeks ago, so it refreshed my memory. But <clears throat> the point being, like, back in the day, like, people would get together for these things because there's no internet, no everything. So you'd all go to yeah. someone's house. Yep. And, like, Ethel would always know that Gertrude was a cheater. And I'm going to watch her. Can you keep an eye on her, Rose? And she was always like, oh, I see her. But, like, the girls would get together and play Bridge and Pinochle and stuff like that. And I think it's cool because these are games. Yeah, crazy games are eights. the most crazy eights. Yeah. Uno. Uno. That's the one that pissed me off the most because I remember losing with forgetting Ooh, to say Uno on the last card. card. Yeah. Oh, you son of a gun! As a That's kid, your fault. yeah. As a kid, I wrote <clears> my <throat> sticky note and said, "I will never play Uno with my father ever again," because he. <laughs> He did it before I even like put the card down. Like you have your finger on the card when he you didn't put say it down. Uno. <laughs> he didn't say Uno. <clears throat> but you're like, it's when you remove your finger, right? It's not when you put the card down. Uh, uh, you're really getting into some father son <laughs> stuff. I don't want to get into. <laughs> <laughs> so nonetheless, uh, I never played Uno with my dad again. Probably never will. Maybe. I'll wait till he dies. Oh no! Oh, oh no! <laughs> You'd be crying over the grave. <laughs> Uno! Uno! I'll bury that card right <clears throat> there. Mm. <sighs> and then there's a... So, I don't know if you had a trampoline. Did you have a trampoline? No, I was really jealous of kids that did. Did you guys make games out of that? Wrestling like move games. Totally, Rangers. like power bombs and stuff. Yeah. Oh, power fight each other. Okay. There's one time where... This is exactly like my kid playing Overwatch with me. How so? Well, you're pretending to act out like good guys versus bad guys is essentially what happens. That's true, yeah, yeah. Which is like the most common theme for at least boys. I don't know if girls always did it, but I, I, some girls probably did. Not all of them. So there's another game we did with the trampoline when my grandmother's dog was with us. 
Um, oh no, you wouldn't both jump up and bounce and make the dog go up in the air, did you? <laughs> no, that's disturbing. Why would you think that, Nick? I, I, so what did you do? So we would throw a bone <laughs> the opposite direction, and uh-huh. by the time it got the bone, we would jump off the trampoline and run around the house, and the dog was faster to the, than us. So by the time oh, we so got back to get a around head start. Okay. and back on the trampoline, the dog would be right on our heels. So if the dog caught us, we were out. You were out. Okay, mm-hmm. that makes sense. That's cool. I like that. Mm-hmm. Kids' games are simple but awesome. There's something we overcomplicate things. As adults? A little bit, yeah. There's something about a simple game that a competition. They also, you, you learn how to take a loss early. Like, can you imagine? I think I think that's happening with video games now is you always win. They're definitely easier than when we were kids. Except for you don't always win in in multiplayer, I guess. Yeah. But like, uh, yeah. As I uh, so someone said this about uh, Ubisoft games that like the map is filled with all this sort of stuff that's just like do this, do that, do this, turn this, do this. You're forgetting right this. instructions, whatever. Yeah. yeah. I don't think that we had any instructions. Like we no, did, it came dude. in a little booklet that was written in Japanese, and we we're just like, check this one. How do we know about the um? So you go to the dungeon level, and you can ride that one platform above, and then run along that, and then go to the the pipes oh, the that were like level six, Nintendo seven, and eight. Power. How baby. do we know them? That must have been <clears> no, power. I think it it was Nintendo Power. But how do we know? Because you had the one kid that it. would come in after he figured out and tell everyone. It. That must have been how it happened. Where did he go? Door to door? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think I think a little bit of the coolest part of all of the stuff we were talking about today, and that is like folklore like it gets passed down by word of mouth it's not on the internet i kind of miss that you have to do stuff by hand you have to talk to someone you have to learn it from someone who did it physically if you were the discoverer like you were probably the first discoverer in your like region or your area or your group of friends but how would you prove it you couldn't prove it you couldn't get anything from it you could just you couldn't pass record along the information yeah no because you'd have to prove it you you'd go over to their house and say in hey court. check this out and then they'd be like what what I got something to show you but who's to say they didn't hear that from someone else that's true that's true hmm hmm i think that covers quite a bit i think it covers everything just about just i love tennis balls i have I advise everyone at home to go grab some uh, optic yellow, baby. See what you find when you uh, start bouncing them around. The other thing is, like, you spend so much time bouncing them, catching them, doing all this stuff with them. When you haven't touched one for eight years and you bounce it, it feels so good. You hit it up the wall, you grab it one-handed. Brings you back. You're like, it does. And then if you, it, it's weird because you can try and do some weird stuff with it, like bounce and really catch a really hard one. And you're like, whoa. I can't believe I dropped a tennis ball. You do it for like five, ten minutes. After mm-hmm. five, ten minutes, you're in the zone. You're locked in. You're like, I'm back, baby. I just learned how to re-ride that fucking bike, bitches. So I got one more. Bop it. Spin it. Turn it. Twist it. Yeah. Oh, is that what, like, that's also similar to, but not really. There's a memory game with the tones. Simon. Simon, yep. <clears throat> Same idea. Yeah. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. It's like a mental warp. And then there's that one with, uh, uh, what was the, you jump over it? Skip it. 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 That's all I know. <laughs> do, 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 skip it. Do Which is also words? cool because, <laughs> I don't know if they did. What's crazy is that all these things we're talking about had commercials. They had jingles. Remember? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's also pretty cool. That was the catch. Mr. Bucket, yeah. you're the one. Mr. Bucket, balls pop out of my mouth, Mr. Bucket. <laughs> and I was always like, later in life, I was like, Mr. Mr. Bucket, Bucket, your balls pop out of my mouth. Do you think? <laughs> yeah. Do you think the creators were laughing at that? Like, there's no way they were straight face. I like, been. I don't see anything wrong with it. Go oh, with it. Man. Run it. Chop it. And run it, Mr. Bucket. Your balls are in my mouth. <laughs> oh shit. If you're listening now, if you're listening later, if you're thinking about it, throw some games we missed in the comments. I think of games like 
games start when you're like four or three or maybe even two. I don't even know. And they, they grow and there's folklore involved. There's talking to other kids. There's other kids that know how to play the games. There's teaching other kids to play games. And there's games that a five-year-old plays that a nine-year-old plays. Like they're different. I'm older. I play this game. There's also something weird that I started doing when I did my research. It's like it doesn't stop at 15. As an 18-year-old, I was doing ball taps on people. Oh, I was mm. doing a lot of ball taps. You know what I mean? There's another one I came across. It was like it's called the finger circle punch. I was like, well, what is this thing they're talking about? And I was like, uh-huh. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, we still did that. But, like, not everybody did that. Not all the time. But it was funny. Like, sometimes you would find funny instances of it how about when you smear off ice someone or it's called icing someone right you pop it through so the funniest thing you can do with any of these things is um paper bag every day i was alive justin k gave david cybox uh the finger okay and every day at lunch, he would give him the finger. He just, he just did it. He would give it to him in his face. He would give it to him here. And everyone would crack up because it just cracked me up. It warmed my heart. And the funniest thing I ever saw was one time he was like, hey, I got something in my lunch for you, David. And everyone would look over. And like he was looking over. And everyone was like, oh, he's just going to give him the finger. He's like, no. Nah. He's like, he reached into his paper bag. And he popped out the back with a middle finger. And I was still cracking up with this. And I was like, oh, my God. How did you get him? He got him again. He got him again. Everyone's hooting and hollering at the table. But it occurred to me, those are the games we were still playing. And, like, when you ice someone, like, I iced you, bro. You show up with a Smirnoff ice. They have to drink the whole thing, even though it's warm. Like, they go on one knee and drink the whole thing. Remember that? It was like, five years ago, yeah, seven years ago. Yeah. Right. But those are still games. We're still playing games. We haven't stopped entirely. So have we you still heard about do the, it. The guys uh, that are still playing tag, or were still playing tag, they played up until. Was like, that the, the movie, the wedding thing? It's yeah. It was based on a true story where those guys would. Okay, so what were so like they would be hanging out, and someone would be like, after like an hour, they'd be like, "By the way, tag, bitch," and then run. No tag backs. I don't so, know. They've been playing for thirty years, so I think they were like, "What?" They must have been. And they're almost in their 40s virgins and, virgins i think you're looking for yeah and they they decided to do it every year so they would like they would strategically plan and trick people into getting tagged and they'd be they wouldn't live necessarily near each other so it would be like you have a set month i think it was like an hour, hour plane ride yeah so you could go back in the month of say may and then tag mm -hmm. as many people as you could back and forth until the end of may and then that person would be it for the rest of the year and you get it's interesting. The only thing I'm wondering about is like the tag back scenario. Like if someone tags me in a room, there's no tag. I'll just tag them back. You can't tag the person who tagged you. Well, then how many people are playing? I'm confused. There was were like two guys. Uh, no. Oh, no, no, this is like, more than two guys. No, yeah, it okay. was like maybe like six or seven guys. Let me see. Oh, okay, that's kind of cool. Okay, now it makes more sense too. I tagged you, no tag backs. Like that's a thing. Like, where did all these sayings come from? Was that? What, what, triple, you can't triple, triple stamp and double stamp. You can't triple stamp and double stamp. And triple dip and double stamp. Two, three, four, Yo, my parents' generation had something called no, Ten no stampsies. The game. Hey, I got new shoes, and you show your friends, and everyone would try and stomp on your sneakers real quick. I, I to, never had that happen. Yeah, well, it's my parents' generation, so they said it's called no stampsies. They made a big deal of it all the time. I was like, what are you guys talking about? No one does this. And they were like, if you got new sneakers and you showed up, everyone tried to stomp them. So you'd say, no stompsies, no stampsies, or something like that. And I was like, what are you saying? Remember Booger Touch? Did you guys have any of the touches? So like someone would pretend to pick their nose or really pick their nose and yeah. then come after you? And then yeah. touch you. And they would touch you. Yeah. Like these are the things that I'm like, it's so hard to explain to someone. I'm like, yeah, it's like Booger Touch. And someone's like, excuse me? Cooties. And I'm like, you know, like, oh, cooties. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, the worst is if you had a kid's name touch. Because like that's like the ultimate shame. It's like Gregory Murphy touch, and you would touch someone, and it'd be like, Gregory Murphy's over there. And you're like, ooh, that kid, he's the nastiest. <laughs> oh, man, Everyone hates him. Poor guy. Poor kid. <laughs> Looking back, yeah, but at the time. Oh, it's wrong, I guess. This is, so I had one of those, so when I had birthday parties, I mm -hmm. would be forced to invite everyone by my mom. I don't know. Everyone in like the grade? Everyone or? in the grade. 
Oh, I didn't go that far. I had like five kids. As a kid, yeah, as a kid, I would call up the people I didn't like and say the party was canceled. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. I needed something to come out of this one. (laughs) Did they did they not come? The mom always called back and said, Is the party? Oh, to verify. I was just gonna say, dude, they had to tell their mom and everything. Holy shit. That's Uh, vicious. Oh, that's such an asshole thing to do. Yeah, it's up there. I like it, though. Uh, I guess I was like the, uh, I don't know, I wasn't the favorite in class, and I wasn't friends with a lot of people, so like I was probably mm-hmm. like one step ahead of the the, the biggest loser in the class. <laughs> so yeah, like, that's all right. So wait, so wait, who are you uninviting? The biggest loser? Yes. Oh my god, that's mean! Were you like <laughs> banding up with him to take on the popular kids or something? Uh, I don't know, that man. That doesn't happen. That's, that's cold. That's cold. Uh, bully on that is the, cold. Yeah, the next low is low. <laughs> You're a bully, but only a small percentage. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, there's probably people out there that remember these birthday parties. Oh, I'm well, sorry. to conclude, client. we talked about uh, the Tide Pod Challenge, <laughs> farm parties, uh, cinnamon challenge, robo tripping, ice and salt challenge. Actually, did you ever do that one? No. You put it's salt on your, on your skin and then you put oh, ice on top of it? Burns. Yeah. 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 Of course it does. Salt. Episode 70 something. 79, 78. Who the hell knows? All these games are awesome, and there's no end to them. Like, the list keeps going. Starts with hide and seek. Did you know the Romans used to play hopscotch? No, but I did read Roman that like, the Egyptians like, love board games. Did they? Like, See 5, that? 5,000 years ago, they were buried with board games that they liked as kids. So it all kind of starts with boredom, right? You just need something to do. Like, it occurred to me after doing these lists and this whole episode that that's a good portion of my life that I don't really talk about often. These games, these adventures, these competitions, these tags, these who's cool does enough it get, to play in the game. Does it get not. superseded by, like, the next version of the game? Like, once you graduate from playing tag, you probably move on to... In our lives, it was video games. Catching women? Do you think it's also catching, catching women? women? Is that yeah. like... That's kind of like... A Linguistics. Tag, right? I don't know. Podcast. How many viewers can you get? Podcast. How many how many beers can you get in there? Yeah. A few? Yeah. Career-wise? I don't know. The amount of money you make? So is that... I don't know. That's a game, right? Yeah. yeah. And how you spend it, what you do with it. So we never stop playing games. The games just kind of change form. And it's crazy that even before the internet, these games were spread throughout everyone. It's just, to me, it's wild. I think it's actually really cool. And I will never not look back on my time on like Elbridge Street or like uh, playing at Max Myers. Oh, yeah, I'll name drop. If anyone knows where Max Myers Park is, God bless them. But we would play games here and do this and all that. And it's just. Maybe the future kids won't play as many outdoor games, but they'll still play games. I think playing games is a part of being human. I think you'll find out. I think we'll find out in the next five years. We'll yeah. see how active our, our children are. Yeah, that's a good point. I will say there was a, like Halloween was recent, even though this is six months ago. And uh, <laughs> there were a lot of people out, like in a neighborhood that I didn't think Did there was Did you get a lot kids. out? Yeah, even though it was kind of rainy and like it was That's warm cool. and we had, it was sixty five and warm and sunny that day for here. And you I was had, like, what? He did you have a lot of a lot of kids running around doing random stuff? No, nah, we had like we had like fourteen people come to our house. Huh. We're at the end of the block and all the other houses are dark. Yeah, so it's not a, it's a value oriented attack. Exactly. A little bit. A little bit. But there were a surprising number of kids out there. So kids like, are still going out, folks. Everyone who's looking at Facebook posts right now that say kids don't remember what this is, and it's like a baseball bat or like a glove or going outside. Pump sneakers. Kids didn't go outside. Yeah. Pump sneakers. That is good. <laughs> kids probably don't know what they are. No. But anyway, like kids might not remember the individual equipment that's going on, but kids will still go outside, and whether they go out as much, maybe not. And – Really, if you could keep playing these games throughout your entire life, like those, that freedom of ten guys, yeah, playing tag. That I mean, that sounds like fun. 
Like, at some point, you realize that there's not much more to life than just trying to enjoy yourself. Have you ever seen the tag world tournament? Yes. Playing in a It's like set up with all those. Yeah, it's got like <laughs> those obstacles. They People slide over and slide through and go around. So I guess you can still do it as an adult. You just look like a freak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the problem is, if you're not really good at it, you stop doing it. True. You, like the people the that are the best it. at it, sure. If you can make a lot of money doing it, I'm not against that. Go for it. But if you are average at best, like if can you, you imagine yourself? you and I? Yeah. How I twisted my ankle. What were you doing? Why you got to work? I was playing. You could see like he loses an arm or something. <laughs> you have one of those shriveled arms and they're like, what happened? I lost a game of tag. <laughs> Don't talk to him about it. No. Please, please, please. So, folks, um, what we're saying is go buy a three-pack of tennis balls and just carry them around with you for like a day or two and uh, bounce them around a little bit. See what's going on. Have a little fun. Think about some old games you played. You can post them in the comments here. You can talk about things we may have missed, games we may have missed, slogans we may have missed, base can't touch us. Why did every game have base? Hmm. I played with my cousins a lot, and everyone was always at base like half the time. Safety. We're on base. You can't tag us. Safety. Of course it was, but you know. Did you make up games? Did you play your own games? Did you play different variants of games? Let us know. Yeah. Kids be playing games, folks. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, I would, too. I said I, if it sounded funny. I didn't. Thanks for tuning in. We like, like you. Just you. Just you listening right now. We like you a lot, folk. Thanks.